I'm going to explain Monte Carlo molecular simulations. Before starting to the subject, uh, I want to introduce general view of the topics. At the beginning, I will explain Monte Carlo method. After that, I will explain molecular simulations. But in this topic, in molecular simulation, firstly, uh, I will show an example of a simpler system than a molecular system. And then, uh, energies and force field will be explained. Finally, I will introduce limitations in molecular simulations and using Monte Carlo methods in simulations. Let's begin with Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo is a statistical method used in simulation of data. Randomly generated numbers used for simulation. Yes, uh, it sounds a bit confusing to use random numbers, but I will give an example in a minute. This is a very general technique used by many fields like finance, insurance, engineering, manufacturing, energy producing, etc. Here is an example of how randomly generated numbers can help us. For example, we can approximate to pi number by random sampling. Random sampling means choosing random elements from the data. In here, we have a circle surrounded by a square, which adds tangent to the circle. And the area of the circle is pi times r squared. Area of the square is 4 times r squared. And the pi equals 4 times area of the circle divided by area of the square. Which means if we know the area of circle and the area of the square, we also know pi number. However, we don't know the areas. But we can approximate to areas by choosing random points in the square. And this is Monte Carlo method. Let's approximate to pi number by selecting random points on the square. We know that 4 times area of the circle divided by area of the square equals pi. So 4 times number of points in circle divided by number of points in square should give us pi number or should approximate us to pi number. As we increase random points in the area, we are getting closer to the pi number. So far, we simulated area of the circle and the area of the square to approximate pi number. In general, in Monte Carlo method, we are getting closer to the real dat data as we increase number of random points. After that, we will have a look at molecular simulations. Finally, we will discuss how to use Monte Carlo method in molecular simulations. Molecular simulation uses powerful computers to simulate the interactions between atoms to understand the properties of life. Molecular simulations can be used to design drugs and to model biomolecules to improve our understanding of the real world. To calculate behavior of molecules, we should consider potential energy of the system. Before getting into force field, I mean as a topic, I will give a simpler example of calculating potential energy and force acting on particle. Here, V of X is potential energy of a simple harmonic oscillator. X is position of particle and K is stiffness of the function. The F of X is the force acting on particle. Force is directly related with the gradient of the function. So we are taking first derivative of the function, but we are taking negative derivative because force will act on particle towards the origin. This system is a one-dimensional system. In molecular simulation, our system will be three-dimensional. In here, we are simply taking a derivative. In 3D system, we are taking partial derivatives of uh, partial derivatives in respect to all directions. And the results of that gives us magnitude of the force and its direction. If force is equal to zero, that means system is relatively stable. One of the most important thing in simulation is to find stable conformations. So how can we find that point for a specific initial conformation? Here, simple gradient distance algorithm for G function. I visualized that function for better understanding. In that point, uh, x is 1.8 and y is 1.0. This is our initial point. In very first step, we are calculating partial derivatives in respect to x and in respect to y 
to uh, calculate our gradients in that point in uh, 1.8 and 1.0. After calculating the gradient, we are updating our point uh, according to gradient and step multiplier. We are using a step multiplier to determine our size of step. Uh, and after many iterations or after getting desired uh, gradients, we are terminating our algorithm. In here, uh, we performed 500 iteration. And after that iterations, we are getting our last point. It is almost zero for both X and Y. And uh, the important uh, thing is the gradient. Gradient uh, in respect to X is almost zero. Also, Y is almost zero. If we increase our step multiplier, that means we are getting a uh, desired point uh, much more faster. But uh, there is some consequences of the uh, bigger step multiplier. If we increase our step multiplier, we may miss that uh, minimum point or we may jump that point and we may not find the point. Or if we uh, use a less step multiplier, uh, getting to the gradients will take much more time. So we need to find a proper step multiplier for our algorithm. As I said, uh, this is a simple gradient distance algorithm. Also, uh, to understand uh, our point, our that point, uh, we need to use second derivative. Second derivative will tell us uh, our point's properties. For example, if gradient is zero, uh, our point can be a local maximum or can be a local minimum. Local minimum is here and local maximum is here. Uh, in both positions, the uh, gradient is almost zero, both in here and in here. So to understand that, uh, we need second derivatives of the function. Uh, second derivatives uh, of the function in respect to all directions is uh, starts in the Hessian matrix. So, after explaining energy minimization for a simple function, we can go to the potential energy uh, calculation for molecules. In the context of molecular modeling, a force field or potential energy uh, defines the energies of the atoms based on the harmonic bonds. Uh, harmonic angles, dihedral angles, van der Waals, and electrostatic interactions. So, this is potential energy function for molecules. So far, I explained Monte Carlo, calculation of minimum potential energy for simple harmonic oscillator, and potential energy function of molecules. And eventually, I can explain Monte Carlo molecular simulations. Now, we have a potential energy function and we generally want to find most stable energy point for that system or that molecular system. Different conformation of molecules result with different potential energy. In here, I showed two variables uh, function for simplicity and also with the potential energy, this 3D plot shows potential energies for different conformations for our five atom molecule. Theoretically, we can find most stable conformation of a system, but technically we can't because there are so many possible conformations. For example, every atom has three coordinates, X, Y, and Z. If we have 200 atoms, in a system, it is 600 coordinates in total. If we want to look 10 different x, y, z for each atom, that means there are 10 to the power of uh, 600 possible conformation. And we need to calculate first and second partial derivatives of the energy function to say whether that conformation is stable enough or not. And it is impossible to calculate. So, we need a better way for estimation. Monte Carlo method comes here. We generate random variables. For example, uh, 
we are generating random x and y values uh, and then we are calculating their potential energies and their gradients and so on and then we are deci deciding uh, whether it is enough or not and we calculate uh, all possible conformations sorry uh, we uh, estimate possible conformations as we increase randomly generated values we got better result in forecast thank you for your attention see you later